What's going on, E Nation fans? This is Ian Perez Foyer here. Welcome back to another episode of Racing Topics with Ian Perez. And today we are going to be talking about yesterday's 105th running of the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500. And my, oh my, what a race that was. Where do I begin with this race? Wow. Woo! I... Honestly, no words to describe how awesome the month of May was at Indy. Wow, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to start off. But we're going to start off with the Indianapolis Grand Prix. Actually, we're going to start off with Texas. Does everyone know? Because that's the start of the month of May. So Texas doubleheader, yeah. Race one, sucked. Race two, somehow Mm, sucked less. And also, Pato Award got his first career IndyCar win. And unfortunately, Wolf Byron could have gotten the top 10 at race 2. But no! Texas sucks dick. So, yeah. Who knows? Maybe Power could do better in the month of May, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Anyway, um, so now let's go to the Indianapolis Grand Prix. Yeah, it's a typical Indy Grand Prix, not eh, just a typical, eh, it's a race. And then, uh, Roman Grosjean. Let's talk about Roman Grosjean. Wow. He dominated the race, but unfortunately, because of the situation with Montoya and Sato, ironically, former Formula One drivers, were there, and then that pretty much cost him the win. And Rina's VK. Rinas VK, another first time winner. He won the Indianapolis Grand Prix. How about that? And coming from a Spencer Pickett fan, oh man. That, like, I'm happy for VK, of course, but Pickett is one of my favorite drivers. He was in the 21. Unfortunately, he didn't do so well. So, yeah. But congrats to VK. My goodness. I, he's got a bright future ahead of him. And now. Indy 500 time. Woo! What the hell happened to Will Power, honestly? He was like from eh, not as fast to slow, and then to the point that he was going to qualify on bump day. What the hell happened to Team Penske, especially Will Power? I feel like ever since Roger Penske bought IndyCar and Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Team Penske fell off. At Indy starting last year. But Will Power though. Holy fuck. Honestly those 24 hours. They were, they were the most nerve wracking 24 hours ever. As a Will Power fan. Because Saturday. I'm not going to lie. After first day of qualifying was done on Saturday, uh, last Saturday. During the Codex City race. Honestly. I almost cried. Because I, cause I feel like I'm about to witness. My all time favorite IndyCar driver. Getting bumped out of the 500. And then there were others like Sage Care, um, Simona Di Silvestro, RC Anderson with Top Gun Racing, and then Charlie Kimball. And then on bump day, thankfully, Will Power, Simona Di Silvestro, and Sage Care did get did race, they qualified their way to the 500. And unfortunately, the new team, Top Gun Racing, RC Anderson did not get in, and Charlie Kimball. Also, he didn't get into the 500 as well. Honestly, I feel bad for Charlie. And then, for some reason, for Will Power, he somehow got six on card day on Friday. Like, where was this shit during qualifying? Where was this shit during your daily practice sessions? Whew. So, here we are. Race day. Um, fuck. Okay, so Scott Dixon... Started on the pole. Like, honestly, Indy, uh, Indy 500 qualifying was the fastest Indy 500 qualifying ever, from what I heard, I believe. So, so this Indy 500 special, honestly, it, this, this Indy 500 month, honestly, felt special because last year we did race at the Indy 500. Unfortunately, nobody was there because of COVID. Like, literally, nobody was there. Although we did get the race in, it felt empty. 
And it felt even emptier that it was raced in August and not the month of May night, like normally. But with this Indy 500, there was a lot of hype. I was hyped. Everybody was hyped. Man, this is... Out of all Indy 500s I watched, this is the most special one. And about the race itself, my goodness. A lot of people are saying that the 2021 Indy 500 is probably the best Indy 500 ever. One of the best Indy 500s ever. Like, oh my goodness. Like, everybody was so happy about the race. And honestly, I can understand why everybody thought yesterday's 500 was the best Indy 500 ever. In my opinion, it was a great race. At the time, I didn't really think it was like, oh, like one of the best. And honestly, thinking about it after the 500, I feel like this race will be one of, I feel like this race is one of the best Indy 500s I've ever watched. It was incredible. The storylines. And, oh my god. A new track record because, whoo, history is being made yesterday. Elio Navis tied A.G. Foyt, Big Al, Al Hunter Sr., and Rick Mears for four Indy 500 wins. Elio Castronavis became the fourth IndyCar driver to join the four-time winners club. I never thought that would happen, but oh my god. And he even did it with Meyer Shank Racing, this time with no Penske. So Elio Castronavis is with the legends big time. And congratulations to Meyer Shank Racing to get their first ever IndyCar win. At the Indy 500! I'm so happy for Elio still. I'm not an Elio fan. I have huge respect for Elio. He's one of those guys that I like to root for. And oh my goodness. You're ha you have to be happy for Elio, but you hate it for Alex Palau. Alex Palau trying to bring Ganassi the first Indy 500 win since 2012 with Dario Franchitti. Unfortunately, two laps too short. Man. You hate it for Palau. I really hope he wins the 500 soon. And guess what? There's so many ironies because let's flash back to 2011, 10 years ago. Dan Baldwin, he was racing in the Indy 500. He was an Indy 500 racer um, for one race deal with Brian Herta. He won. And then 10 years later, Elio Castanavis got a ride for Indy. And I believe he, I believe he has a six race deal with Meyer Shanks. So ten years later, another part timer won the Indy 500. It's very, very cool, man. This race, this race will be remembered years to come. Like the storylines, the race itself. Honestly, like all of 2018 was lackluster. Honestly, when IndyCar knew like that, the the over package is not the best. They were gonna fix it. I had faith in them. And ever since then, 2018 got good. 2020 got good. 2021 got good. So basically, they 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 fixed. They pretty much fixed the oval kits. I'm sure they'll still fix it because it's still not perfect. But honestly, 2021 was, of course, like between 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, the race the racing got better and better in my in my personal opinion. I noticed that IndyCar did it. They did their work. They did their best. And honestly, I'm happy for them. NASCAR would never, folks. NASCAR would never. So, congratulations, IndyCar, once again, for another amazing Indy 500. And honestly, for an amazing race, there's only two cautions. One for Stefan Wilson, and the other one for Graham Rahal. Although this race is great, I want to get, I want to talk about some negatives, unfortunately. Um, pit road, like everybody kept every, a lot of drivers had issues coming into pit road during green flag pit stops. Stefan Wilson trying to slow down, coming to pit road. He wheel hops, crashes, uh, will power. Um, he wheel hops and spins. Simona Di Silvestro wheel hops. She spins. And, um, then there are like other drivers, I think. Ryan Hunter Ray got a penalty. I think Rinus VK got a penalty. I think Felix Rosicourt got a penalty for going too fast. Um, yeah, honestly, I feel like Pit Road was 
was an issue. Entrance to payroll was an issue yesterday. Some people saying, oh, there's like a bump on, on the entrance to pit road or whatever. I don't know what happened, but that was ridiculous. That's my only, uh, that's, that's a negative. I think, I hope that's my only negative coming from that race. And then the second and final caution, surprisingly, the second and final caution, Graham Mayhall's crash. So what happened to Graham Rahal was that he was he was doing his pit stops while the left rear tire changer was putting on the tires. The, the jack dropped and like the thing was that he wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. He was like, oh, too soon. Uh, they, they dropped the jack too soon. And then after Rahal got out of the pit road, left rear tire fell off because it wasn't completely tight. Then Rahal had, had a hard crash and then a tire was bouncing and then Connor Daly who dominated the race, um, hit Ray Hall's tires. Thankfully, it was not where the arrow screen was. It was like somewhere in the front bumper. I'm surprised Daly didn't get a front bumper change. I'm surprised about that. But um, yeah, so if you wanna know what happened, if you wanna know what happened to Ray Hall's mishaps, um, they dropped the jack too soon. That's what happened. So I don't know if someone's getting let go. I don't know. But um, so yeah, but other than that, Yesterday's race, chef's kiss, beautiful. It was beautiful. Everything about it was beautiful. Having the fans back in the stands and having an amazing race and also the pre-race stuff, the traditions and all that stuff with fans is beautiful. I know we didn't get fans on the infield or have the snake pit or the pit, comp the pit stop competition or the Freedom 100 and all that stuff, but we're almost going back to normal. We're almost going back to normal. So step by step, looks like by next year, Indy 500 will be 100% normal again. We will see fans in the infields again. We might see normal car day stuff again. But as of now, it was so awesome to see 135,000 fans at the Sands, the largest crowd ever during the pandemic. And guess what? Thankfully, the pandemic is going lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. Thankfully, that's the case. I think we're almost going back to normal. So next year, the 8500 will be 100% normal again. So yeah, that was a fantastic race. The entire month of May, it was fantastic. Whew. Unfortunately, willpower... Ah... Uh, Honestly, we were we could have gotten the top ten or maybe top five finish if it wasn't for the pit road entries being stupid. From starting thirty second, climbing all the way on top to like the top ten, almost top ten, whatever. Unfortunately, no. B thirty, no, 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 no. Anyway, so yeah. Hopefully Power does better uh, in the, the rest of the season. And Alexander Rossi and Scott Dixon, both of them had issues on pit road early in the going. But somehow Dixon, in Scott Dixon fashion, got back on the lead lap. And for Rossi, I really hope this is not another bad season for Rossi. But if this shit keeps happening to Rossi and Vicker and all that, it looks like it might be. I really hope that's not the case, but I don't know. I'm concerned about Rossi, honestly. I really hope his season turns around as well. So, yeah. Scott McLaughlin won the Indianapolis 500 Rookie of the Year. Apparently, there were two rookies at the 500. Uh, Scott McLaughlin, Pietro Fittipaldi. And, yeah, it wasn't really that... Comp it wasn't really, like, much of a competition about Rookie of the Year at Indy. The uh, McLaughlin's gonna take it, and, um, yeah. McLaughlin could have had the top 10, but his pit strategy thing was different, so he'll do better next year. But for a driver who had, who, but, but for a driver who did well in the Indy 500 debut, like Scott McLaughlin, he did a good job. He did a good job. Not the results that he wanted, but hey, he'll do better next year and other years to come. So, yeah. The Indy 500 this year, yesterday, if you ask me, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I, I, I still have no words to say about this. I'm still happy Elio won. Whew. I don't know what else to say. 
But for Will Power, hey, at least he at least he competed another five hundred. So there's a positive positivity on that for me as a power fan. So yeah. But for Elio Castanavis, if we see him continue to race an Indy car, guess what? He has a chance to drive for five. That's right. Elio Castanavis has a chance if he does continue to race to go for his fifth. Indy 500 win. Jeff Gowen has five Brickyard 400 wins. I think Michael Schumacher has five Indianapolis wins. But nobody in IndyCar has won five Indianapolis 500 races. And there's a chance Elio could get it done in the future. Is it possible? I hope so. But I think, I really hope Elio goes for five and break history. Elio tied history yesterday. Could he go for five next year? I hope so. So, I don't wanna like accidentally ramble and I think I've said what I said. It was an amazing 8500. Oh my goodness, it was just beautiful. It felt so normal. Yeah, I know my good buddy Race Day 2011 was so fucking happy that Elio won. Robbie, if you're watching this, my hat's off to you. So I think that's gonna do it for another episode of Racing Topics of the Perez. I think I said what I, I think I said everything I wanted to say. Great Indy 500, man, that was exciting. The racing was just, nah, love it, love it. Everything about that race is just spectacular, and I'm happy to see a lot of fans being so happy about this race, saying, "Oh, this is the best 500 ever. Oh, this is the best 500 ever." This race is a highlight. Twenty years from now. Like, all those things. And honestly, I agree. If you look back, if you go to, if you fast forward 20 years from now, and you look back to yesterday's 500, it'll be a classic. It'll be a classic. So, I think it was like a record-breaking Indy 500, because we had the fastest Fast 9 ever, I believe, or fastest qualifying ever, or something like that. And then... This is 500, the fastest Indy 500 ever. You love to see it, folks. You love to see it. Could you imagine if Indy, could you imagine yesterday's Indy 500 went caution free though? Wow. But uh, we, we only had two cautions. But for a two caution race, for a mostly clean green race, it was amazing. So yeah. <laughs> Man, I love IndyCar. I love IndyCar. So with that being said, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe for more. Follow my social account in the... Uh, I almost said the link's in the description below. My bad. Uh, follow my social accounts. Don't forget to turn on my YouTube notifications for more motorsports content. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting E-Nation. This is Ian Press 48 signing off. Goodbye, everybody.